Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk Elysium Floridanum Gray Ghost. Gray Ghost is a named cultivar of our native uh, Florida anise. Uh, this is, uh, Elys again, Elysium Floridanum Gray Ghost. Has this really incredible uh, bluish green foliage with uh, either kind of off-white edges and sometimes brighter white edges, especially when it has a new growth on it. This is evergreen and it's going to form kind of a rounded habit, but quite large. This is gonna be a great screening plant in shadier spaces. So this can reach, we're gonna say six to 10 feet by like four to five or five to six feet. Uh, again, with that kind of a roundish, uh, roundish shape to it, but it'll blow through that eventually. It's a fairly vigorous grower. Gray Ghost flowers heavily in the spring and then we'll have residual flowers in the fall. I'm shooting this in the middle of October and here's an example of a residual flower. So some, some flowers. The flowers are about two inches across and most people describe them as kind of very pink. And for me thus far in the ground, I can see a pinkish hue to them, but they're, to me they're a little, uh, I would call it a pale pink and not, a, you know, not go overboard in how I'm describing it as pink. The flowers are nodding, which means they face downward a bit. So I think as the shrub gets larger, the flowers are going to be uh, more on display than when they're, you know, really teeny tiny plants, similar to hellebores where the, where the flowers are nodding or pointing down, you know, but hellebores stay small. Eventually this will get up big enough where you can see the flowers. The flowers are slightly, f uh, can be fetid or, or uh, off scented uh, for sure. Obviously they're fly pollinated, uh, you know, a lot of stinky flowers are like that. The foliage, this is an anise. And so when you, when you crush the foliage, uh, it does have that uh, anise scent to it. Uh, to me, it's a, it's, it's a great fragrance. Uh, to me, um, but the fragrance is also helpful with deer resistance. This one's going to be hardy in zone seven to nine. Uh, placement is definitely going to be in the shade or part shade. Deep shade, it's going to try to be a kind of a thin, you know, a thinner plant on you. Part shade is probably ideal where it gets some bright light uh, in an area maybe where the trees are, you know, limbed up a bit. This is another one like many plants that kind of like their roots protected a bit. So make sure it's mulched and weeds are away from it. And you know, you're keeping the, uh, the, you're keeping the roots warm in the winter. You're keeping them moist in between rains and you're also keeping them cooler uh, during the uh, summer months because the uh, shallow roots on it can get quite hot. So not one you're gonna throw out in the sun and let the, and let the sun cook it all day. Where are we gonna use this native shrub uh, that's perfect in the park shade or shade conditions? Definitely is a foundation plant. If you have a spot on a corner on your shady side of your foundation where you can allow something to get eight or 10 feet in height, this would be a great choice for that. It can kind of be the focal point in a woodland garden. So set back in your woodland garden, having smaller pieces uh, out in front of it. Great in a mixed border, or mixed hedge. Uh, again, I, when I talk about screening plants, I don't, you know, I try to discourage folks from lining 20 of anything up in a straight line, but this would make a great uh, piece in a mixed hedge or border. I think you could probably leave it as a container plant in a shady space for probably a couple of years uh, without any problem if you just wanted an accent piece that was elevated in your woodland garden and then eventually transition it to the ground once it outgrows that container. So you can see our use for it. We've got a chain link fence of the neighbors right here behind it. The neighbor's house is very close to us. So this one's only been in the ground for about 18 months. We expect next spring it will put on some vigorous growth uh, pretty quickly now that it's established itself. Uh, these like to be planted in kind of rich, um, moist woodland soils. Uh, this spot right here is kind of the opposite of that. Uh, we, we did amend it, so it had some wood chips that had broken down, some compost was here. So it is that, it does have that rich soil that it, that it likes, but it's under uh, an existing red bud over here and it's quite dry. So the transition into the landscape has been a little slow uh, because it needed some additional water uh, you'll see that on some of these Elysium planted, used as ornamental plants uh, for the first year, maybe two years. They can do a little more wilting than other things. The, the great thing is, though, they're great at letting you know. They'll, you'll come home and the thing will be, you know, wilted uh, like this. Drag a water hose to it. Once they're established, they're actually very drought tolerant. They're perfectly fine in our ornamental landscapes, but initially they're, they're not in favor of it. 
I only fertilize my ornamental shrubs once a year, and that is in the late winter, you know, sometime around February or March. I like most of our native plants to the Southeast United States, they are acid loving plants. And so our pH here in this soil is somewhere around 5.5, which is kind of ideal for it. I'll use just a regular organic fertilizer uh, that time of year. If you happen to have a pH that was closer to seven, uh, you probably want to use something like holly tone, something um, you know, has a sulfur component to it that will uh, help in lowering that pH. Uh, although temporary, uh, it is helpful with that. Pruning, it's really not going to need a lot of pruning unless you put it in like super dark shade and then it might stretch on you a bit. But overall, it's not going to need a lot of pruning. This one's getting enough bright light that it's full enough that I just don't think I'm going to have to do any pruning on it. If you did prune it, you'd prune it after that spring flowering. And again, it's going to bloom heaviest uh, there in mid-spring. And then again, you could go after it if you needed to. It could probably be reset in the future. If you, you know, if it got out of control, you could cut it in half probably sometime after it'd been in the ground eight or 10 years, uh, if you ever needed to. Uh, other than that, this is just a super, super low maintenance shrub. So you got, you know, it's deer resistant, rabbit resistant, insect resistant, all of those kind of things built into it. And again, it's a, a named cultivar of one of our great native plants. So this is Grey Ghost Elysium. Thanks for watching.